Hey guys, glad to have you watching. This week I would love to show you my golden weaver ants. I know I have shown them before, but they have grown a lot and they made a big and beautiful nest which I thought is really worth showing. Plus I have a better camera now, so I captured a lot of cool new footage. The colony is housed in a 40x40 formicarium and is a true eye catcher in the end room. But in the last couple of weeks they have made this beautiful nest a lot bigger. The nest is located against the heating mat and as you can see there is a minor gap between the nest and the wall. I am really curious how the inside of the nest looks like, so I will be taking the heating mat off to take a look inside. I will show you the results later on in the video. Let me properly introduce my colony first. These ants have the nickname Golden Weaver Ants and belong to the Polyrachis genus. They have this nickname for a reason, as you might have seen the ants have a beautiful and golden glow. Polyrachis is Greek for many spines. Poly means many and rachis means spine and ridge. And if you look closely you can spot the spines on her shoulder. I think my colony is around one and a half years old and I have more than a thousand workers. But it all started with this test tube which is still being used a lot. The inside of their nest is no longer visible, but as you can tell by the activity at its entrance, I'm guessing that the tube is packed with workers and brood. It didn't take them long to find the hemp fiber and close off the entrance of their nest by using their larvae as a glue gun, which I will show a little later on. And from the moment I added the second test tube, their growth went pretty fast. These ants always have two huge bird feeders filled with water. But when I got home from a one week vacation, I found out that the colony has took over the biggest bird feeder and were using them as a nest. Look how awesome this is. They made horizontal floors inside the bird feeder. And as much as I wanted them to make a nest for themselves, I thought this was way too beautiful to remove. So the nest still stands today and provides as another satellite nest. Not only have they built inside of the feeder, their nest expands on the outside as well and even goes down. It just seems like a small patch with some brood every now and then, but there's plenty of traffic, so I assume the nest on the floor is probably a bit deeper. The colony now owned two test tubes, a water feeder, a ground nest and their big nest was soon to follow. From a distance it doesn't look that much, but if we zoom in we get a much better perspective. The colony cleared out the entire corner of hemp fiber and used the small flakes and the silk from their larvae to create that beautiful nest. They used the ball like this as an anchor and started building layer for layer. And by the looks of the ball now, it won't take long before everything is covered. Creating such a nest from silk as small fibers is pretty impressive if you ask me. I wanted to document them building so badly because they have already made some preparations. I captured the ants while handling the larvae, but not the actual building itself. Their preparations kinda look like this. They make strings which eventually will turn into flaps and those flaps are being pulled and glued in the right position. You can clearly see that the construction is still a bit wobbly. From this angle you can see that the colony has multiple flaps and strings hanging from the nest. They even have them hanging on the side and they will probably do the same on the top. It looks like there is another big nest expansion coming up. Workers pulling the flaps and strings together to make the nest just a little bigger. Even the flakes on the surface are still a bit loose. I assume that's where the flaps will meet the surface and they will glue it all together to form another chamber. And when the structure will be finished on the outside, I guess it will look something like this, where the hemp fiber is covered in silk. And to be honest, it's looking pretty solid. This is one of their anchor points on the outside. I was being told that these ladies don't use a pheromone drill, so the outworld can be too complicated or the ends would get lost. I'm not sure if this is true, but to be completely sure I made sure the nesting balls were easy to find through ropes and twigs. 
and besides the fact that it's practical for the ants, I love to see them climb around the outworld, on the twigs, the tree and the ropes. Most of the ropes get together on one point and form a knot, close to one of the balls. But of course my luck, the ants have chosen the other ball. As you can see, the knot is on the left and they have made their nest on the right side. So the only function the ropes are having now is being in the way when I'm doing my maintenance. I think I've showed you enough of the setup. You have seen the front and now it's time to show you the back which is covered by a heating mat and which I haven't removed in a very long time. And there it is, the back of the nest is almost fully covered as well and it's looking pretty amazing. Only a few patches are open and we're able to see the workers handling the larvae. I think checking on them now was a very good idea, because I'm guessing it won't take long before the entire structure is covered with silken fibers. In almost every chamber the ants are busy covering everything up and making sure the plexiglass is covered. The ants make sure the larvae are well fed with protein as their larvae is using this protein to produce their silk. But instead of using their silk to transform into a cocoon, they use it as a glue gun and glue pieces of hemp together. Or they will use it to create entire curtains with it. The larvae can walk for themselves, so the worker ants carry them with their mandibles. And if you look closely, you can see the worker ant tapping the larvae with her antenna to communicate while working. I'm loving how the inside looks like, it must have been a lot of work, creating hallways and chambers like that. I always wondered why they eat twice as much as my other colonies, but this explains a lot. This might be the last time that I'm able to see the inside, so I'm glad I did it, and I'm glad I have it on my camera. I'm curious what the colony will do with this part of the nest since it's being used as a garbage site. Mostly it contains old cocoons and legs from dubia roaches. But this overachiever is trying her best to get something bigger upstairs. And if the colony is closing the entire structure, they won't have a place to drag their meals in. And as you can see, they drop their garbage from the nest to a big pile on the ground. This garbage site mostly contains leftovers from food such as dubia or cricket, but also small bits of the remaining pupae shells. I assume they eat the rest. A little bit more to the left is their graveyard, filled with dead workers. And talking about those dead workers, golden weaver ants known to act a little silly with those. They pick them up and walk around for hours or days even. They walk with the dead until they are exhausted of their own. Let me just show you instead. My advice would be to take away the dead worker and either throw them away or put them in the graveyard far away from the nest. Because it will cost the colony a lot of energy and not every worker will make it to the graveyard. Another unique thing that the colony has is that it has been producing winged ants since the beginning every now and then. For those, I'll have the same advice, get the winged ants out, since the colony will start attacking it very soon. And besides that it's sad for the male ants, it costs the colony a lot of energy as well. The ants will do the same with workers who can't pick up the pace, or workers that are injured. They will group up and kill her. It's very brutal, but it makes the colony as efficient as it can be. So again, if you have any male ants, just get them out. The ants are normally not that aggressive, only when it comes to their big nest. She will defend it fiercely and snap at everything that walks by. Just look at her, lashing out at her own sister. These girls like it a little bit warmer. I'm keeping their outworld between the 27 and 30 degrees. If the temperature goes down just a little bit, the ants will slow down a lot. So nice and warm it is. When it comes to food, these ants will eat everything, as long as it is a lot. 
Their main source of protein comes from adult Dubia roaches. They will eat twice as much as other colonies with the same amount of workers. And the colony receives a baby mouse every once in a while. I figured I would try something new this time. I glued two sticks together and pierced some roaches on it. So besides the fact that it's looking pretty amazing, it is also very easy to clean up. These girls make quite a mess when I put feeder insects on the ground, so I usually put their food in empty jelly cups. I think it would be awesome if one of the end shops would be selling suction cup feeding plateaus for bigger colonies. Since these are placed against the wall, it's easy to spectate, easy to clean and easy to film. I mean just look at these shots. It looks really good because it's in the air. There's nothing in the background and because the ends usually don't get this high, the plexiglass is still clear and clean. I tried giving them worm and cricket and they loved it, but whenever I need to clean up, there are small bits everywhere. And with these roaches, I have minimal cleaning and a lot of protein for the ants. Their main source of sugar are sugar cubes. I received this tip from Ant Heap and it's the most convenient thing ever. The ants love it, it's wonderful to spectate and once again minimal cleaning. And once in a while they receive some beetle jelly, but due to the mess I'd rather stick with sugar cubes. If you have polyrachis yourself or a big other colony, try giving them a sugar cube and see how they like it. As long as you don't give it to a messor. These ants that are feasting on my saliva were checking the borders of the fluon, looking for a place where it is easy to escape. These ants are really good at climbing, so make sure the escape barrier is up to date. I have a thick layer of PDFE, but while filming, one of the workers managed to escape. So, besides the fact that these ants love to test your escape barrier, the fact that they eat way too much, the fact that they make a mess and scatter it across the outworld, these ants are really wonderful to keep. In all seriousness, I would get yourself a stable colony. And if you do, you get yourself some wonderful ends to keep. I know I have been missing my deadlines and being less active in chats and social media, but we are three weeks away from moving to a beautiful house with a new wonderful end room. I'm currently packing boxes and shopping a lot for the new house. In a few weeks we will be moving and right after we will be busy making the house our home. I will keep up filming editing and posting on YouTube, but I won't be able to meet any deadlines coming weeks. I'm sorry, when everything is done and my new Antrim is ready, the entire process will go a lot better and making videos will be a lot less time consuming. If you got this far watching, I'm hoping that you somewhat enjoyed my content. If so, I would appreciate it a lot if you would subscribe. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please let me know below. And if you appreciate all the effort I'm putting into these videos, you would help me out a lot if you would like as well. Thanks for watching and I'm hoping to see you all next week. Bye bye!